Hello everybody, my name is Evelyn Volke and I'm a professor at Ghent University. In this tutorial, I'm going to explain to you how to monitor the concentration of dissolved gases using the gas stripping method. More specifically, we will calculate the concentration of a gas component that is dissolved in a liquid from the concentration of that component in the off-gas of a stripping device, which is measured with an online gas phase analyzer. We are going to apply this method to monitor the concentration of dissolved N2O. N2O is a very strong greenhouse gas which is formed during biological nitrogen removal from wastewater. However, the gas stripping method as such is more general and can also be applied to monitor the concentration of dissolved gases other than N2O. The gas stripping device consists of a gas stripping flask and a scum trap flask. We want to know the concentration of dissolved N2O, in this case, in a reactor. This concentration is denoted as CLR and is a function of time. A liquid stream is sampled from the reactor and sent to the stripping flask. It is pumped at a flow rate QL. The liquid volume in the stripping flask is kept constant by pumping out the liquid at a certain level. At the same time, a stripping gas is bubbled through the liquid in the stripping flask. This stripping gas can be nitrogen gas, but also outside air can be used. After the stripping gas has passed through the liquid in the stripping flask, it is sent over the scum trap flask. This is an empty bottle to collect possibly entrained scum before sending the stripping gas to the gas phase analyzer where we monitor its concentration of N2O. This concentration is denoted as CG2. The relation between the dissolved concentration of N2O in the reactor that we want to know and the concentration of the gas measured by the gas phase analyzer is given by this relation. In this equation, we see the values of the gas flow rate and also of the sampled liquid flow rate. We also see other parameters, A1 and A3, which are determined through a batch stripping test. In this test, the stripping flask is filled with a liquid sample from the reactor under study. The stripping flask is operated in batch mode, so we don't have any liquid stream going in or out. Stripping gas is bubbled through the liquid in the stripping flask to strip out the N2O that is dissolved in the liquid. This results in a typical profile that can be described by the following equation, which can be seen as a double exponential function. By fitting this equation to the measured data, we can determine the value of the parameters A1 and A3. So, that is the operating principle of the gas stripping device. Let's go out now and see how this method is applied in the field. Hello, my name is Janis Baten and I am a PhD student at Ghent University. We are currently at a wastewater treatment plant where we have installed the gas stripping device to monitor the dissolved nitrous oxide concentration in the aeration tank. This is the gas stripping device, the most crucial part for this method. As you can see, it consists of a plastic graded cylinder of 250 milliliters with a rubber stopper. The rubber stopper has four connections. One inlet for the liquid sample, one outlet for liquid discharge, an inlet for the stripping gas, and an outlet for the stripping gas. The inlet for the liquid sample is connected to a peristaltic pump which provides a constant flow of water from the aeration tank. The sample enters the cylinder at the bottom. The outlet for liquid discharge is connected to a second peristaltic pump, which sucks out the water from about 10 centimeters below the rubber stopper. 
the inlet for the stripping gas should receive a constant flow rate of air or nitrogen gas. The stripping gas enters the cylinder at the bottom through an aeration stone. This aeration stone can be a simple aquarium stone as long as it provides fine bubble aeration. In this case, we use outside air because this is convenient since we don't have to transport any gas bottles. However, air should only be used if the concentration of nitrous oxides is either negligible or fixed. In other cases, it is advisable to use pure nitrogen gas. <clears throat> it is also important to keep in mind that the gas phase analyzer has a minimal required gas flow. It is therefore advisable to use a mass flow controller to have a steady flow at the required rate. This last connected tube is an outlet for the stripping gas. It carries the gas towards the gas phase analyzer. However, to avoid damage to the gas phase analyzer, two pretreatment steps are required. First, a scum trap is installed. This scum trap is a glass bottle which collects any entrained scum. Secondly, a condensing unit is needed to remove moist from the gas. In practice, this condensing unit is often integrated in the gas phase analyzer. Then finally, the gas phase analyzer measures the nitrous oxide concentration in the gas and logs the data. Finally, the gas is sent to an online gas phase analyzer to measure and record the nitrous oxide concentration in the gas. Before we can start measuring the liquid phase nitrous oxide concentration in the water, we need to characterize the dynamics of the gas stripping device through a batch stripping test. To do this, we need a sample which contains nitrous oxides. <coughs> we can simply turn on the sampling pump and wait until the required volume is reached. Afterwards, we turn on the flow of stripping gas. Bubbles now rise through the cylinder. Nitrous oxide from the sample is removed and it goes to the gas phase. The gas phase is then analyzed by the gas phase analyzer and the data are locked. Afterwards, we can use the data to find the characteristic parameters of this gas stripping device through calibration. Now that we have performed the batch stripping test, we can start measuring the nitrous oxide concentration in the reactor. To do this, we turn on both the peristaltic pumps and the flow of gas. The gas phase analyzer locks all the data automatically and later on we can convert the measured nitrous oxide concentration in the gas phase to the nitrous oxide concentration in the reactor liquid. This is the typical gas phase profile obtained from a batch stripping test. To these measured data, we can fit the double exponential curve that we have seen before. This data fit can be done by minimizing the sum of squared errors, for instance, using the simplex algorithm. From the fitted curve, we obtain the value of the parameters A1 and A3. A1 is related to the constant term. If we have used outside air, which contained already N2O, then this value will be included in A1. A3 is related to the decreasing part of the curve. We can also identify the values of the parameters A2, A4 and A5. But we do not need to know them strictly to know the relationship between the dissolved N2O concentration and the measured gas phase concentration. The value of A5 is interesting because it will also give us an indication of the accuracy of the measurement device. And here we have a typical measurement profile from continuous N2O monitoring with the stripping device. These data that I show you now are from a reactor which was operated with intermittent aeration, so with alternating aerobic and anoxic periods. The relationship between the monitored gas phase concentration and the dissolved N2O concentration in the reactor is now determined by the equation that I showed you before. 
Recall that this equation contains the values of the parameters A1 and A3 that have been determined in the batch stripping test. It also contains the values of the gas stripping flow rate, the sampled liquid flow rate, and the volume of the liquid in the stripping flask, which are known for our specific setup. We now know how the stripping device works, but how about its measurement accuracy? The performance of the gas stripping device is determined by its detection limit and by its bandwidth. The detection limit corresponds to the lowest concentration of dissolved N2O that can possibly be measured. The bandwidth corresponds to the fastest change in the dissolved concentration dynamics that we can still capture. These characteristics are determined by the parameters A3 and A5 that we have determined in the batch stripping test. They are also dependent on the stripping gas flow rate and the sampled liquid flow rate, as well as of the volume of the liquid in the stripping flask. For this specific case, we find a gain K equal to 0.0378. This implies that if we have a gas phase analyzer with a typical detection limit of 1 ppmv, the detection limit of the gas stripping device will be 0.03 gram nitrogen per cubic meter, which should be sufficient in practice. As for the bandwidth, we find that the fastest N2O concentration change that can still be measured is equal to 0.025 per seconds. This corresponds to a time constant of 40 seconds. In other words, the gas stripping device is able to capture dynamics on a minute timescale, which should be sufficient for most practical applications. If need be, the detection limit and the bandwidth can be adjusted according to the specific needs of the process. So, now we know how to measure the concentration of dissolved gases using the gas stripping method, coupled to an online gas phase analyzer. The method is applicable under aerated as well as non-aerated conditions and can be used for, to monitor the concentration in covered as well as non-covered reactors. It was demonstrated here to monitor dissolved N2O, but it can also be applied to monitor the concentration of other dissolved gases. I hope you find it useful for your application as well.